welcome back we are in the third lecture of single phase induction motor the last two lectures we have discussed the introduction construction and the principle of operation of single phase induction motor using the double revolving phase theory we will focus our discussion on the torque produced by single phase induction motor first and then we will see how the slip changes due to the double revolving phase theory so each component of the mmf wave induces motor action so this mmf wave we have already discussed that there will be forward mmf and the backward mmf and both of them will induce the motor action the torques from these waves oppose each other so if the torque on the y direction or the forward mmf is in the y direction then the torque in the due to backward mmf will be in the negative y direction so both we oppose each other at rest or standstill condition equal forward and backward flux waves it is no starting torque so this is the limitation of the single phase induction motor that we don't have any starting torque because the forward mmf and the backward mmf cancel each other and we don't get any resulting flux or the resulting mmf or the resulting torque if these mmf remains equal during the rotor motion torque speed resembles a polyphase motor with low stator leakage impedance so we have seen that in the three phase induction motors or what we say the polyphase motors the torque speed speed characteristic so if the waves of forward and the backward mmf remains equal when the rotor will be in motion then we you will get the equal torque slip or torque speed characteristic which we are going to see in the coming discussion so the resulting torque speed characteristic is the sum of the two component curves so these mmf wave the forward mmf and backward mmf both will be combined and there will be sum of the two component curves to give you the torque speed characteristic of the single phase induction motors so we have already studied the torque speed characteristic of three phase induction motor where we have seen that the value of the slip will vary from 0 to 1 and here in this particular case we will see that the slip will vary to 0 to 2 the reason is that the first half will be forward mmf and the back and the next half will be due to backward mmf so here we have the value of the slip is 0 the slip is 1 here and the slip is 2 here so you can see that if the motor is rotating in the clockwise direction we are getting the torque slip characteristic in this first quadrant whereas if we are rotating the motor in anti clockwise direction then we will be getting the torque speed characteristic in the third quadrant so so the torque slip characteristic will be the combination of the forward torque and the backward torque and due to which you will be getting the resultant torque operation of single phase induction motor which varies from 0 to 2 and at standstill condition if we see we know that slip will be 1 in case of three phase induction motor at standstill condition but here we will be having two slip one will be due to the forward condition which is slip equal to 1 and another is 2 minus slip which is also equal to 1 so where from this 2 minus s is coming so d2 the maximum slip become 2 here and we will see this derivation also in the coming slides the forward and the backward numerically equal but opposite direction so at the standstill condition what happen is that the forward torque and the backward torque are numerically equal and they oppose each other and the starting torque is basically zero so the induction motor or single phase induction motor have no starting torque operation motor when started by auxiliary means so this auxiliary means are uh, using by hand or by using some other motors which are known as pony motors we have discussed in the previous lecture which will produce a torque in the initiated direction so this initiated direction means either in the forward or the backward depending upon the user who is rotating the motor 
either clockwise or anti-clockwise. So we need some auxiliary means by which the motor has to be started. So assumption of equal flux waves during the rotor motion simplifies the actual condition. So we generally do the assumption that there will be equal flux waves produced during the rotor motion. But it is not so, it is just an assumption. And we ignore the factor like stator leakage impedance effect and induce a rotor current not fully considered. So these factors are generally ignored when we say that the equal flux waves are produced. A rotor in motion increases backward rotating current reducing the backward flux. So when the rotor will be in motion either clockwise or anti-clockwise direction then the backward current will increase. So backward rotor current will increase and this will reduce the flux of the backward direction. Forward field magnetic effect decrease as speed rises due to the lower rotor current. So what happens the rotor current is reduced so forward magnetic field also decreases and the total flux waves remain constant inducing a nearly constant stator counter EN. So when the rotor is in motion then due to these two effects what happened is that the torque which is produced or the flux which is produced become constant and you will be getting a constant stator current EMF. The stator leakage impedance voltage drop impact is minimized. So we don't have any impact of stator leakage impedance under the running condition. And in motion, the forward field torque surpasses the backward field torque. So forward field torque will be more than the backward field torque and the rotor will be in motion. So normal running condition, forward field significantly greater than the backward field. So if we see the forward field in this direction, it will be very, very large compared to this backward direction. So this is only a representation purpose, not to scale. But yes, the forward field will be more and the rotor will be in motion. Flux wave resembles constant amplitude boniface motor EMF. So when the rotor is in a rotation, then single phase induction motor and three phase induction motor behave in a similar fashion and you will be getting a constant torque and constant flux wave production. Single phase motor torque speed comparable to a falling phase motor. So we can compare the torque speed characteristic of single phase and three phase motors. Double stator frequency torque pulsation resulted from oppositely rotating flux waves. So we have seen that uh, the pulsations in the flux waves which are produced are due to the flux which is rotating in opposite direction. So these pulsation creates no average torque. So pulsations do not create any torque. It is only the rotating flux which can create a torque. So these pulsations will contribute to only the motor noise. So you will be having the noise in the motor. Torque on curves represent the time average instantaneous torque. So when we are plotting this torque speed characteristic like this, so each and every point of the torque, we are taking the time average of the instantaneous torque because torque is also a function of time t depending upon the load. Now we'll discuss the rotor seat due to two rotating fields. So rotor is started by auxiliary means and the torque is developed. This we have seen, uh, we always require some auxiliary means by which the single phase induction motor has to be started and then only the torque will be produced. So forward field will be taken as the direction of the initial start. So whether we are rotating in the clockwise direction or anti-clockwise direction, depending upon the user, that will be considered as the forward field. And if you see, consider the synchronous speed with ns and rotor speed with n, then the slip of the motor with respect to the forward field is the actual speed, which is equal to ns minus n by ns. So this is the general formula of finding the slip of induction motor, which is equal to 1 minus n by ns. So this is with respect to the forward field. What happened for the backward field? So backward rotating flux rotate opposite to the stator. So you will be having some forward field and the backward field. So it will be opposite to the stator field. Thus, it will be corresponding to back slip. So here you have forward slip and here you have back slip. So back slip, when we are finding, we are just changing the direction of 
the rotor movement. So it will be 1 plus n by ns. So when we have the negative, it is basically due to the forward slip or forward flux. When you have positive, it is basically due to backward flux. And what is the meaning of forward? Forward means the initial start. In which direction we are basically starting the rotor. And when we add these two shapes, if we add this SF plus SV, the two forward and backward shape, we will observe that this term will cancel and we will have only two, which is a constant. And hence we can say that the backward shape is equal to two times two minus the forward shape, which we used for the torque speed characteristic. So when we are drawing the torque speed characteristic, we are having the variation from zero to two. So here we have zero and here we have y. Now, these single phase induction motors are not self-starting, but some auxiliary means we have to give. So, how we can make the single phase induction motor self-starting? So, motor is temporarily converted into two-phase motors. We have seen that the rotating magnetic field, phi. So, phi is rotating when we can have the three-phase supply or we can have the two-phase supply. We have already studied this, how the rotating magnetic field is produced due to three-phase operation and the two-phase supply operation. So here for single phase induction motor, if we take, then it is the two-phase only which is producing the rotating magnetic field. So it is temporarily converted only for temporary duration during the starting period. So the additional starting winding which are present in the stator alongside the main winding and these are basically known as the auxiliary means of starting. So we will be having the main winding, we will have some starting winding which are auxiliary winding and they are present in the stator and the rotating magnetic field will be produced in the air gap between the stator and the rotor. So these two windings means the main winding and the starting winding are 90 degree apart in electrically angled and they are connected in parallel to a single phase supply. So when the supply is given to the stators they are connected in parallel the main winding and the starting winding and they are 90 degree apart and ideal phase difference between the stator winding current is 90 degree so whatever the current has to produce from the stator it has to be ideal condition it should have 90 degree phase difference the resulting current create a revolving flux ensuring set starting of the motor so we have already discussed that when you give two phase supply you can have the rotating magnetic field and this rotating magnetic field will be of constant magnitude of 1.5 times the phi m. So that will have the resulting current and rotating flux will be produced. In the initiation, you have the pulsating flux. So pulsating flux will already create noise. It will not uh, rotate the rotor, but it will create a noise. So two phase uh, motors is initially in operation for the single phase induction motor. So it is for temporarily convertible. Okay. So this uh, complete the third part of single phase induction motors. We will discuss the equivalent circuit in the next part. Thank you for now. See you in the next lecture.